I'm with Sandy Roach, One Nation candidate for Fadden in the upcoming by-election in Fadden. How are you, Sandy? I'm doing really well, thanks, Rubes. How are you doing? Oh, fantastic. Um, Pre-polling started on Monday, didn't it? It did. It uh, started on a very cold Monday morning. And it didn't get much better throughout the day, actually. And then that Tuesday it rained, and then yesterday it started to fine up, and today's just, just a glorious day in Queensland. It is, it is. And how's it going at Pre-Poll? It's been interesting. Uh, we've had uh, all parties represented. Uh, we've had a bit of tussling between the uh, two big parties on uh, where they want to stand and how they want to uh, probably, um, what would you say, come across to the people. They want to be in pole position, so to speak. So anybody in their way is getting pretty well um, knocked aside. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a pretty grubby uh, game, isn't it? It is. It's, it's been quite an eye open at this one. The last federal election, um, there was only like, I think seven of us running. So it wasn't as um, competitive, I suppose, down at the polling booths. This time there's 13 of us and yeah. There's like volunteers everywhere, there's call flutes everywhere, signage everywhere and and yeah, and everybody's just um, trying to uh, get their their policies across to the people as they come into the polling booths, so yeah. And that's all you can do, you know, you, you worry about your own campaign and run it the best you can and um, you know, you have no control about what other people do or say really, do you? No, not at all. And, uh, and that's what we've been doing with the One Nation team. We've just been, you know, keeping to ourselves, you know, chatting to, you know, people that as they're coming through the polling booths, obviously. But, um, yeah, and just being friendly, really. Because yeah. there's no point in getting, you know, causing any upset because it only, it just ruins your day, really. So I, I, I volunteered for uh, Liberal Democrats last year at the federal election at the polling booths. And, uh, Oh, I, you know, it was fun. You know, yeah. you met a lot of new people. I've had some very interesting conversations with a lot of the different parties. Uh, do my views align with theirs? No. But it's always nice to, um, yep. you know, listen to other people's opinions and yep. uh, get an understanding of where they're coming from. I'm not averse to listening to other people's opinions because that's where you, um, you know, grow uh, through... You know, under, understanding where people are coming from. You know, absolutely. So, and if you, if they're willing, if I, I kind of think that if I'm willing to sit there and listen to what they have to say, then it should be a um, reciprocated, and they would uh, listen to what I have to say as well. And by that, that means that then the conversation opens up, and both our opinions, or you know whatever it is is discussed and and we can both walk away and make our own evaluations after that absolutely and um, we'll just quickly briefly touch on your head of vote cards yeah um now yeah, with head of vote cards uh you that's not you don't have to follow what the no, uh party no, says that's no. just a guide isn't it it is it's just a suggestion so if you guys if you guys get to the polling booth and you want to vote for me that's amazing i really do appreciate that However, if you don't want to vote the way I've, what's been suggested on my How to Vote card, please do your research and yeah, vote however you want, guys. It's, it's the most important thing is that you put me one. <laughs> That's it, you know, and the rest, well, you know, like you do have to number one to 13. Don't forget to do that. Yep. And uh, you do need to, you know, research and make sure that you um, actually put your second vote where you want it to go to. But at the end of the day, the first vote is really the main vote, and uh, and with this whole two-party preference thing, it's really important that I do get a first vote and to be in the running. So, yeah. Yeah, and your preferences are um, the way they are because they're uh, the ones you've got at two and three are, are, are the ones that align the most with what your beliefs and and views and policies are. Not necessarily because you wanted them there. You know, you want to do it for the good of your. For, for you, for One Nation and your constituents. That's, that's right, isn't it? That's exactly right. My values, um, are, I'm very strong in my, you know, where I stand and what my values mean to me personally. And when I have um, put my How to Vote card together, I've put it with people that align with my values and, and what um, my stance is on certain issues within the community. I, um, yeah, so... 
I, you know, my, my first and foremost one at the moment is a lot of people are with the referendum. It's a no from me. And um, the majority of the people down at the polling booths are all on the other side of that. So, you know, just, just that alone is one of the big issues at the moment is that referendum and the no voice to parliament. So, uh, and then there's other things that I hold really dear to my heart that uh, I just won't waver on. And so, and being a Christian, that's my Christian values, the freedom of religious speech, and, and actually the freedom of speech, which the Albanese government are at the moment trying to yes. um, stop. So, you know, I can't align with people that don't give people the freedom to speak what, you know, they believe. And they shut you down and, um, and, and, and lie and, and, and yeah. bully. And then they tell and you that, you know, what they say is truth when we know it's not. And then if you speak against what they're saying is, you know, the truth that they're speaking, then you're going to be, you know, found you're going to find yourself in jail or <laughs> find yourself with a five hundred thousand dollar fine just for speaking what you believe is um how you see things today. and i believe there's a clause in that bill uh that disinformation bill that that, that makes labor and uh their cronies exempt that's exactly right from from, from it so even telling the truth really not really fair is it that's why we need people like sandy rates in parliament folks to uh try and keep them honest and uh make sure this doesn't happen to australia and we remain as free as we possibly can Absolutely. be and, and grow better yeah, from 100%. here. Yeah, 100%. Because if we, if we keep going down this track we are, it, yeah, you won't, you won't be allowed to speak what you feel You'll be able all. to fart. No, because it's... You'll have to get a licence for it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just, sorry, yeah, sorry, man. It, no, it, it is just, it is that, you know, like our, our freedoms and our... You know, like our freedom of speech, even like it, it's it goes beyond understanding that you won't be able to speak what you feel is is the truth it, for fear that it's not the truth and being arrested and put in jail. How ridiculous is that? Well, it's, it's, it's happened. It already happened in places overseas. Yeah, and, um, we're, and we're not overseas. We're Australia, for goodness' sake. You know, we're, we're supposed to be the, the, the lucky country. It should be and that, you know, if you don't like what I say, that's okay. Just scroll on and, and yeah, um, don't worry yeah, about don't it. Don't worry about it. But if you do think that what I'm talking about is truth, then, you know, then go and research it and find out more truth. So, that's it. But it's all being, you know, if Albanese gets his, his way, then that will all be put under the Disinformation Act and we'll all be muzzled, so to speak. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for... Um, coming and chatting with us uh sandy really okay. appreciate it no and um i'm going to continue dropping flies around this beautiful area of fadden here we are in uh arundel a couple of big trees there yeah they are. nice little area here i used to live in this area many not so long ago yeah and this is um, part of the area that my children actually grew up playing in this is their backyard before it became very developed so absolutely um yeah so it's it's actually nice to come back here and, and see it and look at all these old trees at least they're still standing they haven't knocked those down which is great and yep. no and no uh, wind turbines here guys <laughs> no no praise god <laughs> so with uh so, yeah absolutely praise jesus and um so with your um volunteers where do you need them most at the moment uh, at the moment um runaway bay i've got um starting up next week because we're going for pre -pol? To yeah, six pre-polling booths next week, and so yeah, it's going to get pretty hectic. It's going to get very hectic, and I'm I'm really short. I'm going to be short at um, probably Helensvale and Runaway Bay next week, um, and I've even even in Southport, I've got one beautiful lady, Gail, who's um, put a hand up to sit on that polling booth most days by herself. So. If anyone can spare, you know, a couple of hours a day to just go down to Southport Community Centre and Lawson Street to give Gail a hand, that would be really appreciated. Um, even um, a couple of afternoons up in Pimpermar, the Pimpermar Sports yep. Hub. I need a couple of people up there in the afternoons. We've got people in the mornings, um, but not a lot of people in the afternoon. And that's a, that's, that's a big space to, to yeah. get around up there at Pimpermar Sports Hub. And... Um, that's about it, really. Right and what's the what's the best way people can contact you to um, volunteer? If you want to contact me, it's best way to get me is to either ring me or text me, zero four seven eight two eight zero five one seven, and I will endeavour to get back to you. Please don't, you know, 
um, get disappointed if you ring me and I don't answer, I will get back to you. Just leave me a, a voice message or a text message or something. And I would love to get back to you and just, you know, have your, have your volunteer and, and help out. It's, uh, yeah, it's for a good cause. Absolutely. And you've got a lot more volunteers this time too, haven't you? Yeah, I have. I've been, um, I've been really blessed. Um, we've been talking about, um, you know, bringing the other parties together and helping one another out. And uh, very, very, um, I suppose, happy to report that. We've got um, the Libertarians helping us out on this campaign and some of the old UAP guys have come along to help me out and yeah, it's, and just people that have heard and have just want to come along and, and help out One Nation because yep. they've come from the other parties because they're disillusioned and they just like had enough. Yeah, we've got to unite and yeah. um, you know, that's the only way we can sort of take on these this corrupt system because... Yeah. With the, with the odds are stacked against you, you can see it at the polling booths with all the, with all the bullying and oh. and, and uh, nitpicking going on. Yeah. Uh, but it's but thank you very much for your uh, short interview, um, thanks, Sandy. I really appreciate your, the work that you do, and thanks. we want to try and help you do as best you can in the Fadden by election next Saturday. Thank you very much, Rubes, and, and everybody that's uh, put their hand up to help me out. I really do appreciate. It. I couldn't do it without everybody's help, and it really does mean a lot to me. And it's helped me, um, you know, be able to present One Nation in the best possible way and to hopefully, you know, get me our position in the uh, House of Representatives. Awesome. Wouldn't that be great? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. See ya. Thank you, everybody. Bye.